What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. I love HelloFresh because you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. If you break it down, here's what it means you don't have to go to the grocery store. Boom! Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Boom! And this is because there's so much less waste. You get exactly the right amount of food for the number of people on your HelloFresh order. So if you order meals for two, it is exactly the right amount of meat, protein, produce, and spices to make those recipes, meaning you're getting farm-fresh produce that arrives within a week right? You're not skimping on quality, but you get the convenience. You're saving that time, that half hour, 40 minutes or more a day going to the grocery store, right? And you're not buying more spices, more proteins or more vegetables than you need to make those recipes. So it really cuts back on food waste. It also cuts back on time spent in the kitchen when things are pre-measured, um, You don't have to uh, use your dishes or your measuring cups to measure them out. You don't have to wash as many things. And in my experience, you can cook these meals from HelloFresh within about 30 to 40 minutes, totally start to finish. HelloFresh can save you money. It's 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save on average over 65 bucks a month by using HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's more money to put towards those other 2022 goals of yours. Uh, they offer 50 menu and market items each week to choose from, including vegetarian, calorie smart, family friendly, and gourmet options, providing a ton of variety. This week, they've got hibachi sweet soy bavet steak and shrimp. They've got uh, white cheddar Wonder Burgers, making restaurant quality meals available right in your home kitchen. They offer the flexibility you need to easily customize your order online or in the app, change your delivery date, your food preferences, your plan size, or skip a week whenever you want to if you need a break or you're going out of town. Um, HelloFresh also, if you like cooking at home, it's not like all of a sudden HelloFresh means you're not cooking. You are cooking. You're learning. Learning new techniques, learning new combinations of uh, foods, learning new recipes, and you can keep those recipe cards and then, you know, double, triple, or quadruple the recipes if you want to cook that uh, meal for a bigger group later on. You don't lose the knowledge and you don't lose the recipes. It is brilliant. So go to HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire16 and use code SmokingTire16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. All right? HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire16 and then use code SmokingTire16 for 16 free meals and three free gifts. It is a kick-ass deal, folks. We're also brought to you today by Valvoline, America's very first motor oil brand. That's right. For 150 years, Valvoline has been innovating, creating, and reinventing motor oil from the first high mileage to the first synthetic blend to the first racing oil. They've never stopped pursuing innovation to maximize engine life. And their latest innovation is extended protection, full synthetic motor oil, providing 50% better wear protection than industry standards and 10 times stronger against oil breakdown. Valvoline extended protection is specifically formulated with dual defense additive technology, combining an innovative additive boosted with a fortified detergent system. And you may not think you're a severe driver, but short trips, towing, extreme temperatures, turbocharged engines, heavy loads, and spirited drives put extra pressure on your engine. So get that Valvoline extended protection today. They are the only motor oil with a dedicated engine lab where they can run their own testing and standardized engine testing right in their own facility. They're the world's number one supplier of EV battery fluids, offering tailored products to help extend vehicle range and efficiency. And Valvoline is proud to be the official motor oil of Hendrick 
Motorsports. This year, Valvoline driver Kyle Larson was crowned the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series regular season champion with nine wins and 2,000 laps led. So head over to your local auto parts store and ask for Valvoline Extended Protection by name. Thank you to Valvoline for sponsoring today's show. Lastly, of course, it's Squarespace. I have a lot of experience with Squarespace. It made it very easy to not only create the Westside Collector Car Storage website, but also the Smoking Tire website all by myself. They've got the widgets. It makes it easy. It's an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your own business, right? It's just like uh, like a Windows or a Mac folder system where you make folders and subfolders, and that's web pages and, and sub pages. They've got these easy templates for you to drop in imagery, uh, use graphics either built in or your own, help write, write text, create links and URLs, even bring in animations or uh, social media connectivity. You can connect your YouTube channel, you can connect your Instagram, you can con- make th- features that automatically update you can make a website that has access by multiple people if you've got a web designer or a social media person or different bloggers who want to work on your website i mean everything about squarespace just makes it super super easy and straightforward because you don't want to have to learn like html you don't need to be like a traditional designer to have a website your business might be flowers or food or talking about cars why have to learn advanced web programming for that basic stuff squarespace has e-commerce built in you could have a member area built in with a paywall you could have videos from youtube vimeo or any other platform built right into the Squarespace site. Connect your social media accounts, like I said. You could have multiple contributors, and of course you've got web analytics, so you can see how your website performs over time with easy to use insights into top traffic sources, products, device types, browsers, etc. And you own all of the content you put on Squarespace. It's one-click data portability, and you own that content. It is an excellent, excellent way to make your own website no matter what your business or personal needs are. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash tire. That's squarespace.com slash tire to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com slash tire, 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, folks, on today's episode of the podcast, we talk about the Subaru WRX. We talk about how the Maserati MC20 looks because we can't yet talk about how it drives. We talk about uh, the... uh, Tesla autopilot crash in which the driver was charged with a felony and give some thoughts on that. And of course, we have loads and loads of questions from the Patreon page. It's a crew show on the Smoking Tire podcast. Uh, That girl in my uh, Pilates class, the one that's like drives the El Camino and the Magnum and is like super hot and all, as an artist who does art about El Caminos. I shouldn't, yeah. She mm-hmm. told me today, she was like, oh, I'm so glad you're in class this morning. I uh, My mom gave me this truck and uh, and I, I think I wanna sell it. Like it's up in like, oh hi, I don't have like much room for it and I think I wanna sell it. And I go, okay, like I can help you sell it. Like, is it cool? She's like, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. She's like, I don't know a lot about them, but like it's a Land Rover. I go, oh. It's like an, an old one or new one. She goes, it's kind of old. I go, oh, let me see a picture of it. It's a North American spec 1995 Defender 90 in yellow with a matching trailer. She goes, do you know where I might be able to sell this? I was like, yeah, I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, she's like, because she's been in. Cars she's and been asking trailers. about getting Austin Healey. She wants an Austin Healey. What? And she wants an Austin Healey because she can't afford a Jaguar XK120. That's the dream, the XK120. And I go, I'm not gonna say her name because I don't wanna blow up her spot, but I go, uh, you could sell this. <laughs> That's all you say, you went, nah. <laughs> I go, I go, yeah, I need you to understand that you could sell this and get the XK120. Like, you, you, if you, you'd sell this thing and market it right, 
You're you're not buying a Healy. You're buying an XK120. Really? Aren't those those are six figures now? XK120. Have you seen what fucking NAS? The, the last no. two defenders to go on fucking bring a trailer have been over a hundred thousand dollars. Jeez. With a matching yellow trailer. I mean that is very rare. Yeah. No. Wow. Bring a trailer. The last few have been like ninety to one hundred fifteen thousand for a North American spec Defender nineties. They expensive. Uh, the number of fo- of listeners who are signing up for Pilates right now just tripled. Bro, Studio MDR, that's what's up. You want to come do Pilates with me? I wonder how I many listeners would want to come do Pilates with me. I could probably improve their ratio of, of male. Here, look, Land Rover Defender 90 NAS, pull up the results. We're, you're prepared to be shocked. That one's live, 55K. For, look, at, look, bro, look at the angle, Whoa. look at the angle. Topping at 130. 126K that one sold yesterday for. So there's a yellow one, 75. That's Vortec. Here, NAS 5 speed. That's the one from uh, the third one over top top row, third row. It's blue, but but that, it's a 5 speed. This one's a stick. 103. Soft top. 103K. Yeah. Let's see. Do they have XK120? Chick's going to get money. Yeah, yeah they have definitely have XK120. Such a good car. Ooh, such a good car. XK 50s cars, even very pretty ones, are it soft right now. Gorgeous. People aren't. Yeah, 100 and. I mean. Ooh, it'd be look, close. Some are under 100K. Yeah. I mean, you wow, can get a, a nice. Dude. Look, nice driver. A nice driver's, you know, low six figures. We filmed one of these for Haggerty with Parker Kligerman, and he was like, I want to buy one of these right now. And then he looked up how much they were, and he's like, I cannot. But, yeah, well, they, God, they just But if you sing. happen to have a, a minty, fresh Defender 90 to fucking dump. This is funny. Here's a chassis oh, with yeah. engine. And then if you go back here, there's, there's a, a body. body. <laughs> you can just get a body. Swappy swap. Bring a trailer Legos. Yeah. They're very pretty cars. So Damn anyway. Dear, that's amazing. Do we exist? She's this is the cool. show. We live. We live. We are there. Great. Hello. Hello, everybody. Or in the case of this particular live broadcast, hello, nobody. <laughs> it's actually surprisingly little pressure to live stream to nobody. It's very nice. What are you doing over there, buddy? Back up audio. Oh, make sure. God forbid. Only we, needed it once. Yeah. But... Is that laptop exporting? It's really got some fan. It's uh, making some fan happening. Yeah. Um, oh, the proxy. The proxy. Yes. Otherwise, I can't do anything. Yeah, so. the proxy. I understand. Um, hello, hello, folks. Welcome to the show. Um, it's a nice. We had a, Zach and I had a long day yesterday. Went to we 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 made three videos in in one day. We did a Subaru WRX in the morning, which we can talk about. We then drove the Maserati MC20, which driving impressions are embargoed. Until next week, uh, can't can't talk about can what not. it's like to drive. Uh, can't talk about very much. Can't even share photos of it on right. social media, which is an odd one because you've probably seen. Nobody a photo. knows what it looks. You've like. You've probably seen a photo of it. Uh, do you think they made that rule because the photo typically comes with an editorial? It's not like like if I just put a photo yeah. and then said presented without comment. It's simpler than saying you can't post any thoughts or anything and then there's a gray area and people mm. will go well I posted this but I didn't think that was against and it just goes let's just go blanket no yeah so it's just a blanket no so I mean we're allowed to tell you that it exists that there are a couple of them in North America right now in California um, uh, their color selections very nice the uh, the matte pearl white was very pretty Ooh, the blue good. was excellent yeah um, I didn't see the red one in the bright sun. I only saw it, it in the shade. Uh, the red oh, that's one was true. a dark. It was kind of a dark red. It wasn't it's like, like a burgundy. A, yeah, it was a burgundy. But it has sparkle in it, like the blue and the white. All of their colors look simple, but then when you get closer, they have the light on them. They have yeah. sparkle. The blue was like the Focus RS blue, which is yeah. fucking awesome. Um, it is very, very pretty. I would say prettier than. Um, <laughs> prettier than any of the other cars in its class, which if you ask the people at Maserati what is in its class, they won't tell you. <laughs> it was very funny. We had a fun guessing game. The press release talked about it having best in class this and best in class that. And then I, to the Maserati folks at the event, said, well, what's the class? And they said it's... Um, uh, mid-engine rear wheel or mi- mid-engine mid-engine two-seat two sports seat, cars yeah two-seat super sports super cars super sports cars yeah 
But uh, and so I said, okay, well, what is the class? And they were like, well, something from England, uh, something from Italy, uh, something from Germany. And I was like, okay. I had, and we had to like sit there and go, okay, so it's probably played, the, it it's, was Family Feud. <laughs> it was like. What was that Steve Harvey game? Like, yeah, what is two hundred thousand yeah. dollars mid engine, two seat, not four, not it's, over two fifty? It was, it was a, that was an odd interaction, and the, yeah. the Maserati people were very nice. And maybe there's some sort of legal reason that they won't. I didn't understand why they wouldn't just be like, it's the McLaren GT and the Lamborghini Huracan and the Audi R8. Like that's all you really had to say. Yeah, I've, I feel like a lot of PR people do that, where they go, our, you know, we have our competitors, like they make you guess. For yeah. some reason, I'm not sure why that is. A good but question. not the 911. 911 is not a competitor because it has right. a back seat. Right. Uh, the Ferrari F8 is not a competitor because it's more. Ex- it's a lot more expensive, right? The, yeah. It starts it's at 280. 50 percent more expensive. Um, and uh, what else was not a, a, a like a Ventador? Like too expensive. too expensive. There's other things that were too expensive. But and, then there's too cheap. Cayman's the, too cheap. Corvette Lotus is too Corvette cheap. is too cheap. Right. Um, Lotus, yeah, Lotus too cheap. So we kind of had to like guess what the what the class is, um, but uh, I I will say that I think I, I I think I can pretty confidently say that it, it is the prettiest car in its class. Yeah, uh, I agree. Between R eight, uh, between McLaren GT Huracan. and Huracan, I, I don't like. I think the Huracan is a very clean clean nice design, especially. The ones that like the STO is like, rah, yeah, you know what I mean. But like a regular Huracan Evo is like a pretty clean, nice design. The STO is yo. I heard you like Lamborghinis, so I put Lamborghini in your Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, that's it's oh, exhibit. especially yeah. oh my god, I saw one at Cars and Coffee on Sunday with the worst contrast graphics. Like the STO with no graphics package on it is pretty aggressive and cool, but they all seem to have this graphics package that's like. Heck, just so many more hexagons. <laughs> like it's just too. And this one said yeah. "STO" huge on the door. Yeah. It was not. And it, and it was a press car. Like maybe I'd forgive, but it was not a press car. Just like that Heritage 911 I saw at Cars and Coffee on Sunday with the full Heritage graphics, and it was like, oh, that guy had to buy one off the lot to get a GT3 you're, allocation. You're didn't number. He? You're number seven. <laughs> yeah. Like of what? Seven. Yeah. Um, but the MC20, we can't tell you how it drives until uh, January 26th, at which point we will have a, a Just Noise uh, track video from Willow Springs. Um, and then we will have a, a road drive review with Zach and myself. Um, and uh, we'll tell you how it drives then. But as far as being purely uh, a thing of beauty, damn. Yeah. She fine. Yeah, very, very gorgeous. She fine. Because, you know, the Lambo, I think the Huracan is a good looking car. But it looks like a Lamborghini. It's very angular. That's yeah. their design language. That's fine. I just tend to like the rounded shapes more. And this really hits them out of the park. I mean, this thing, the profile in this car is gorgeous. Yeah. Very, very pretty. It's got those birdcage elements. It actually has the best parts of the Gran Turismo. That no headlights forward, right? And 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 the yeah. ba- and, and the, the back rear, the rear fascia. Mm-hmm actually are kind of from the Gran Turismo and those that really works. Yeah. And then in between it's Birdcage, which is fucking cool. Yeah, it's really um, good looking. Very pretty car. I can't can't wait to share the uh, the videos with you, but we can't talk about it on today's show. We'll talk about how it drives in next week's uh, show. Um, but it's very, very pretty in um, really all the colors. I saw one a photo of one in black too. It looks good in black, although black hides a lot of the curves and stuff. Yeah. I would get it in a in a brighter color or that that pearl white, which is which is very nice. Um, the WRX, though, we can talk about the new we WRX. Can. Yes, boy, did the commenters on my Instagram hate it. God, <laughs> did the com- all I did was post a picture. I was like driving this today, and people were like, "Whoa, yuck!" <laughs> it yeah, was, it was such a hard and universal yuck. Uh, on the styling of the WRX, I, it, I posted do you think a poll it's better it. in person than the, than the photo? If you just saw a photo of it, we've now been driving it for five days. Now, having driven it, it's, does, it's is a it little better, better, than better as a three dimensional object than a two dimensional object. Yeah, um, I I I don't think it's that attractive. Like I, it is a car I definitely just have to judge on its merits. And I really thought that the 
Um, I thought the original bug eye was weird. I thought the bug eyes were weird, but that car I was excited about because of what it did. And then the ones that followed it, I thought were good looking all the way until like 2015. I just think they got busy. And actually when we were filming a 2015 generation, yeah. two of them drove by and I was like, wow, that looks much cleaner, <laughs> much simpler. <laughs> it does, you know, it's not, yeah. I don't think it's pretty. It's very slab sided like everything is today, but at least it looked better. I just think, I think the cladding looks weird. There's too many angles the on it. The cladding is weird. Like... I get it, rally car, all right, and and but but I also kind of don't get it because it, you're already doing the cladding on the outback and on the sport uh, uh, the cross trek, like it, this is supposed to be the sporty one. Like I understand that it's a rally car, but like it's got Dunlop SP Sport Max tires on it. It's not like it's coming on like gravel rally tires. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not the WRX Wilderness. You know what I mean? It's not the it's 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 not meant to be an off road rally car from the factory. It's right, a road but, it's a road car. But that is the image that they have sold for a long time. So I, maybe they're going well. People associate this cladding, at least on Subarus, with the all weather off road vehicles. So if we put that on this, it it helps sell that ideal. Maybe, but that's it, my it, guess. It doesn't really look that great. No, it's a lot of cladding. Yeah, I mean um, it's everywhere. I don't think the cars like hideously ugly if you don't put it next to the one before the one before if you put them next to each other like the ones we saw while we were filming it's got you go oh wow it was it was definitely better before um and i think the cladding makes the wheels look a little small like those are 18 inch wheels yeah but they look a little small well because it looks the, like it has black. a 42 inch tire yeah i mean it, it, it it's the black void plus the cladding um, I don't mind the front end, and I don't even mind the cladding on the rear end. Sl slide over one photo to the to the right and look at the rear end. People, a, a bunch of people got annoyed by the 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 the, the bumper, which is which is clad. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind it as much. It's really the wheel arches that I'm kind of like mm, we well, should have done. Well, we haven't that. been fans of that for a long time, and it's on way too many cars. Yeah. It's just you know, and now looking at the rear. I think Aston Martin Vantage, which is not a compliment to either of them. Um, I don't know, the taillights look really small. It's just, people will buy it because it does a lot of things really well. Well, the commenters have, did but, not like it. It yeah. generated hundreds of comments within the span of an hour, most of which were, were a variation on yuck. <laughs> um, having said that, um, it, what about driving? I mean, it, it drives great. Well, great. I don't know about strong. great. It drives. I don't good, think it drives great. I think it drives good. But when you are on streets, it's a little oversprung, so it's a little bouncy around town. I it's thought it was really bouncy around town. Yeah, it was sort of like in the um, in, in all cars go to heaven three. I put these rally coilovers on my E forty six BMW, and around town, it was like the shocks were meant to take big bumps. But if you only gave it little bumps, it wasn't enough force to like actually compress the shock. And so it would sort of bounce on the springs at low on little bumps. Like this car on the 405, the expansion joints, it was really, really bouncy. Or if you hit a, a, a small pothole in town or uh, uneven ruts in the road in town, it was really bouncy. But then we went up on Big Tonga Canyon Road which has undulations and dips, and it really absorbed those very well. Mm -hmm. Like, I think if you put this thing on a rally stage, an actual it rally stage, good. it would probably feel pretty good. Or a road course. I mean, I think it would feel good. With, it feels good under heavy load. It's like damp mm -hmm. well and sprung well for that kind of driving. So it's just, it's sporty. And if, if you want sporty suspension and you can't afford mag ride, meaning not you, the human being, but like the car is not priced to afford mag ride or something like that, I think you You mean like the electronically controlled dampers that are only available with an automatic gearbox? Well, yeah, I mean, that, we'll get to that in a second, <laughs> but it's just like, they're gonna have to make a compromise. So if they want it to be fun to drive in the corners, which I think a lot of the people buying this car want it to be, it's not gonna be that soft and comfortable around town. It's hard to make both of those things work. Yeah, I mean, in the canyons, I liked it at seven tenths. Like you have to, certain things about it feel like they want to be pushed. Like the part of the of our drive in the morning, the roads were damp, and it was really nicely composed on those damp roads. 
It felt like that tire combination and the chassis had a lot of composure and grip. Mm -hmm. And the steering was even reasonably mm -hmm. precise. The steering yeah. was okay. Yeah, Pretty steering was okay. But the shifter felt really fragile. Like if I shifted too fast or aggressively, like I'd rip the thing right out. It was not nearly as nice as the BRZ shifter. And you have to just be these, do these kind of very slow, deliberate shifts for it to be rewarding. And then the brake pedal was really soft. Yeah. Really soft. And it's possible our press car had, had the shit kicked out of it and had the brakes, the fluid completely boiled and destroyed, but it only had 1,700 miles on the car. Now, a lot could happen in yeah. 1,700 press miles, but, and I, maybe it, someone took it to like a, hot track day but it doesn't seem likely these cars just got to to, to california yeah we didn't look and, at the pads or anything and i don't think anyone has done a a real track test uh with them yet and so it it really just the brake pedal felt really spongy yeah so like the inputs weren't like the brz has the best inputs of any car you can buy for less than like seventy five thousand mm dollars -hmm. and that philosophy just did not extend to this car yeah, I agree with you, which is weird because you know, it's made by the same person. But um, I mean, different engine layout. Like uh, maybe it's a different, it's probably a different transmission. We should look that up. I'm not sure. I, I, it's if it's not if it's not a different transmission, it's certainly a different shifter linkage. Yeah, um, it, it feels light and not not in a way where it feels like light pieces of metal connected. I'm trying to figure out. You know, if you drive like like the old 911s. That shifting feels light, but it feels like, okay, that that shift lever goes right down into the transmission. It's just metal to metal to metal. Yeah. And this just feels like there's, you can feel the plastic in there. You can feel the cables. Like yeah. It just feels a little bit flimsy. Yeah. It's not, mm -hmm. it doesn't have, it has the, it's pretty quick. It's not, it's not slow. You know, the, no, power, the power gets to the ground nicely. We ran, we did five gear pulls a whole bunch over and over beat the shit out of it in the canyon and it's quick it, it's it, it it has good pace and it has good composure but the inputs aren't that great the inputs of the brz are like amazing the inputs on the honda civic si for the same money are amazing the steering inputs the pedal feel the shift feel the shifter in in the honda Civic SI feels like it could come out of a car twice as expensive mm -hmm. and you wouldn't be sacrificing anything. It's like a beautiful, crispy shifter. Really nice. I mean, as good as you're going to find south of a Porsche. Um, but this one, the shifter just didn't feel very nice and the brake pedal just didn't feel very nice. Um, even when you stomped on the brake yeah. pedal, we didn't really get much like ABS engagement, did we? No, I mean, I didn't. I didn't dive on it that hard, but I did expect. I did expect more of like that parachute deployment feeling as mm. I got deeper in the pedal. Like, okay, maybe we just have to go further into it, and it didn't really arrive. Yeah, you know. So I don't know if, if you get one, you're going to want to put on some probably high for, high performance pads and definitely check your fluid. Um, it was also. It felt like a pretty refined thing, in terms of. Like it had great pace, but I was surprised at how fast we were going because I feel like the engine sound has been muted a bit. The boxer sound is almost gone and it's pretty well insulated from like noise, vibration, harshness when you're driving it's, quick. It's insulated from engine noise, but not from like road noise. Yeah. The tires are loud at, at like 70 to 80 miles an hour on the highway. There's a lot of that. Yeah. But it feels like revving to red line, you don't notice you're arriving at red line. It just I hit the rev limiter zing, a bunch it, it of times. It zings there very easily. Yeah. And um, when we were doing yeah, the drive bys as well, because I was more focused on, oh, where was the camera or whatever? Not hitting me. Right. And yeah. I, ba I banged the rev limiter a few times. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's so quiet, you probably won't hear that in the video. But right. It's very quiet from the outside as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and ex I think an aftermarket exhaust is probably what's up. Um, Definitely. And. The Dunlop tires, they, they're they not bad tires. They offer a pretty nice amount of grip, but maybe Michelin's might be a little quieter in, while being just as sticky. Mm -hmm. They would definitely make the car more expensive. But, I mean, because um, the car is light. It's 3,300 pounds, but it, it, feels, it feels like it, which is a pro. I mean, it feels light on its feet, but then yeah. I think it sounds like it on the road. It's a, it feels a little tinny, you little know, little and little, that's a Subaru. Yeah. That's a, that's, I've said that about every Subaru. I mean, even even the Outback Wilderness, like it feels, the metal feels a little thin. Mm -hmm. 
um, and stuff comes in from the outside, noises. When you close the door, it doesn't feel, you know, super solid. And just the other, just like the other day when I had it in my garage, I closed it and it made kind of like a drum sound. And then I was like, mm, and I walked up to my M3 and closed that door and it was like, gong, 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 you know what I mean? And yes, of course, an M3, even a 17 year old or 18 year old M3 is still probably more structurally well made than a brand new Subaru. Well, but it's also probably made of steel, not aluminum, yeah, depending true. on which part of it, yeah. True. Um, Let's get, talk about the suspension though, because you can get good adjustable shocks on it, but only if you get the CVT. Yeah, there's, well, there's weird decisions that are made, right? So this, the, there's, there's the base one, and there's a premium one, and there's the limited one. Is the premium called premium? The one we had was limited, in the right? But GT there's a middle. It. There's but there's an mm -hmm. in between. There's base, and then there's I want to say it's premium, but it's something, and then there's limited, and then there's GT, and the GT is the the most expensive one, and the GT, you can't get a manual. You can only get the CVT with its fake fake gears, um, and there are certain things that you can only get on. That's the old one. That's hey man, this is Subaru. Hey, site. Subaru, Subaru should maybe update their website. <laughs> um, the wow, that looks so much better, doesn't it? The old one looks so much better when you pull that up. It does it just looks so much cleaner? The old one now looks like more close to the legacy GTS of the early two thousands, which were good looking. Are uh, you sure Subaru yeah. doesn't want to be BMW? It's very BMW to make the new one much much uglier than the last one. It certainly is. Um, so. Oh yeah, base, premium, limited, and GT. Okay. So the GT, you can get radar cruise control, as well as some adaptive driver's uh, safety features, some ADAS, right? Mm -hmm. I don't care about the ADAS, but radar cruise control is very important to me. In 2022, I don't fuck with cars that don't have radar cruise control anymore. Because <laughs> regular cruise control is so frustrating once you've used radar cruise control. What, I mean, because it just crashes you into other people. Well. Yeah, because radar cruise control makes you a less attentive person because it handles that, right? Mm -hmm. And if you go back to regular cruise control, you forget and you almost have a crash because you're like, ah, it's going to it's, it's gonna right. stop, and yeah, then it yeah. doesn't. Then you figure it out when you have to do full ABS engagement stop when you almost rear end somebody. But there are some cars that have a manual transmission and radar cruise control. Subaru is not one of them. So you only get regular cruise control, and the GT has electronically adjustable shocks that for some reason you can't get on the manual. Limited, limited which, which is, is weird. Like, I, I don't agree with the argument that you... I understand why Subaru might say, we don't want you to have radar cruise with a manual, because in theory you could stall. If it brings you to a full stop, you know, there's no way for the computer to disengage. Like, I don't agree on other cars have found ways around it. Radar cruise is still good on the highway, even if it's not coming to a full stop or whatever. But to not have the, in theory, best shocks available with the manual gearbox makes no, even as a standalone option, it makes not a lot of sense to me. Like, your highest performing version should be available with the manual. Right? Absolutely. It also is weird that it's, the naming is weird, limited versus GT. Like on Mustang, GT is kind of the middle one. I mean, it's a good one, but it's the middle. But yeah. then limited usually meant this is the best one we have. And I think it's rare. more literal in this case. GT is fewer of them. grand touring. Ah. And so it's for, for it's, it's more comfort oriented. You also get uh, better interior materials on the GT, for instance. But it's really just about those shocks. The rest of it, I could deal without it, but the but the shocks seem like, that seems weird. Hmm. I was trying to find the take rate on the WRX manual versus automatic, but uh, Google is giving me BRZ results, even though I typed in WRX. So I think it's still a pretty high percentage. It's just weird. It just doesn't make any sense. It's gotta be unless, half or close to it. Unless they're gonna then make a fifth trim level called you know the optimum or something and it's going to be like this is the enthusiast best one and it's got a manual and brembos i mean the sti like will probably the come with that Ooh, that's a good point maybe the sti will be manual with um oh that would be interesting 
they make you go get the STI if you want the manual with the electric with the yeah. adjustable shocks because because then they don't want because they don't want to make a manual car with the electro shocks if the STI is getting that also because then in the WRX has a six speed now so you could just put mods on the WRX and yeah. make about the same power as the STI oh, that's in theory we also don't know we if don't. these shocks are good oh, I mean just mm -hmm. because a shock is adjustable does not mean it's good right. Just My it's Focus pizza. RS had adjustable shocks. They weren't good. <laughs> had to go. I had to go to KW and get some eight thousand dollar dynamic shocks to fix the fact that the adjustable shocks on the Focus RS were not good. Yeah. So yeah. Like a, a private a private flight in a biplane is yeah. not necessarily a same as a private jet. Exactly. Uh, and not even all private jets are created equal. There's private jets where if you have to take a shit, everyone gets to watch. <laughs> like. It seems, yeah, yeah, weird. Like that, and yes, it is a private jet, and yes, that is technically luxurious. But do you think it's luxurious when you're wiping your ass in front of the pilot and eight of your other friends? No, probably no. Not. <laughs> Jeez, you get nine people and there's still no bathroom. Uh, I exaggerated. It's probably like six people. It's the small, the small jets, like small or like old ones, like before private jets got like awesome when they were like little, like Lear jets, like in the '80s. So when like, you get your email with your ticket, it's like don't eat a burrito or curry before. Bert, I, Bert Kreischer on their podcast told of, told a story about how he chartered a, a small, fairly crappy jet, and I I, I understand the I, small, fairly crappy jet, but like Relative, hear me right, out. Right. He he had to shit in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh yeah. man, yeah. There's things that are technically luxurious that in Heinz that in reality are not so luxurious. Amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. I, uh, we have determined that uh, Christian Hand, neither Christian Hand nor Reggie Watts will be purchasing uh, the, the, the default smart car. Man. So um, we will be, Westside uh, will be throwing this thing on cars and bids, no reserve coming up. So if you want to buy the world's stupidest smart car uh, that apparently has, uh, apparently has 210 horsepower, um, and has a lot of aero. I don't know if it works, but a it's lot there. Of aero. Wide body, big rams, it racing seats. Rear mounted. Are those intercoolers on the back with the fans? They're or oil are they coolers. Like oil coolers. Yeah, they're oil coolers. So twin rear mounted oil coolers. Yeah. One um, might, or maybe one's an oil cooler and one's an intercooler. But there's, yeah, there, there's coolers. There's ra radiators just on the back. Got these sweet rims with three, uh, three lug nuts. Yeah. Like the long bullet kind. It does have. Uh, what Sparco seats? The seats uh, are good. They're not they're Sparco, like, but they're what's what's another seat company? Not hmm. not Sabelt, not Recaro. Uh, oh, Bride. Bride. I, I think, think they're red, Bride. They red, they're red Bride yeah. fixed bucket. Yeah, I mean they're pretty legit. They're yeah, track buckets. I don't know why you'd want them, but they're there. Uh, I'd want them in a different car. So if you if you if you have no idea what I'm talking about, a customer brought this car to to West Side, and. And this was when we first opened the business. And I learned a lot from this customer. Uh, for instance, if the customer is international, take a year's money up front. Because this guy paid the deposit. It's just the smart car on Instagram. Um, this guy paid a deposit and first month's rent and then disappeared. Just fully disappeared. He reappeared uh, several months later. What the fuck? No, that's not it. It's Instagram.com slash the smart car. He reappeared several months later, promising he would pay, which he didn't. And then he said that he was in, he's sorry for not being around. He got arrested for smoking weed in uh, the Middle East, which is one thing you should never fucking do. Um, there's the radiators in the back, yeah. Uh, it's it's got a badge on it that says electric drive, which it's most certainly not electric. Um, <laughs> and the giant wing, uh, the supports for the giant the wing are the huge rear exhaust tips and dual oil coolers probably give it away. But um, so he then he then said he was going to pay, and uh, that but he didn't. He then said that he wanted us to export it uh, to Bahrain, where he's from. Um, to which I told him that the state of California and U.S. Customs will not let you export a vehicle on an open title because this person, when he bought the car, never signed the title. 
Uh, after hearing that, that we couldn't export the car to him, uh, and that he would have to register the car in California first in order to export it, um, he vanished, fully, fully, fully vanished. So after a long and lengthy process, um, we now own it. It's our car. And so I just want the fucking thing gone. <laughs> Somebody might have something fun to do with it. I don't know what. Wait, this isn't the surprise car that you got? You won't tell anybody about? <laughs> this added, isn't the thing you've been excited to about? to the fleet. Yeah, this is the, I should have done that. That was it. But no, that car arrives uh, in America at the end of February and then probably here in April sometime. Uh, this car, thing. as soon as I have the... Uh, the title in hand, the title that's in, in West Side Collector Car Storage's name in hand, we will be slanging it. It does that? That's a Photoshop, that right? Be, yeah, it's Photoshop, I think. Okay, Zach just pulled up a picture of it like VIP stanced, but I'm I'm sure this thing is not I don't on, think it, it doesn't have air. No, that's a no. that's like a rendering. Yeah. That's it's not an air suspension. Oh, it's, and the wheels are two different colors. Do we that's say that's not important? I think that's very important. It's not important. How do you, this is how you sell things, Matt. That's what are all the features? That's the least stupid thing about this car. <laughs> the mm. wheels are the wheels are different colors. Mm. They are because um, it's a it was a show car for a wheel company. So the left side wheels are a different color than the right side wheels. So anyway, it'll be going on cars and bids, no reserve. Amazing. <laughs> Take it home. I will arrange shipping. Not you pay for it, but I'll arrange it. Or just come pick it up. Whatever. Just drive just, it home. Please just take it. Just take, just take just it. Just take it. Uh, the bidding will be open and it'll be on cars and bids. Doug and I had a real laugh about it. <laughs> but at least like we officially own it now. Yeah. Now it's not like, uh, what's going to happen with this guy? Blah, blah, blah. What if you should? It's like, no, fuck this guy. We own the car now. It's, our, it's a problem it's our, that can be solved car. instead of just a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Wow. It took way too long to solve it. The Whatever is happening- Just a year and a half. The lean department in California, it took it's it was a disaster. I mean, it might have been COVID or whatever. They're drinking lean all the but time. Like, <laughs> it might have been they were all lean. I mean, maybe maybe they're uh, heebs and they lean to the left. No? Okay. I like my no. codeine yours was, joke yours, better. Your, <laughs> your codeine joke was more <laughs> applicable. Um so anyway, buy yourself a smart car pretty soon. I'll even Please. Sign, I'll sign the dash for you if you want me to devalue it there even you go. further. <laughs> People have asked me to sign their dash before. Do I it. Try to talk them out of it. Gareth Reynolds and uh, uh, yeah. Dave used to do it. Yeah. Outside dollop shows. I go, you know who's not going to care about this? The person you try to sell the car to. That's right. In a couple of years. Um, so I thought when we started this, when we were planning on recording the show, that I would get to talk about the MC20 more. Oh, we could briefly touch on the fact that the um, for the first time ever, uh, a driver of a Tesla Model S oh, yeah. has been charged yeah. with a felony uh, for a crash that happened while they were using autopilot. And I think it's interesting. It's well, it's very sad. Uh, charged with vehicular manslaughter after a 2019 crash in which the driver was uh, using uh, autopilot, not full self-driving, but autopilot. Nice of them to use the picture of a confused looking Elon I mean, Musk there. I mean, they just, that's click, that's pure clickbait. <laughs> that's clickbait pure picture. clickbait. Um, so, you know, the good news is that there's a small bit of accountability being assigned to, to this. Um, and it's being linked to the use of a very dangerous system. The bad news is it's focusing on the driver, right? And, and it gives the people who make the dangerous software an out. They can say, well, they, they agreed to the risks, they clicked the checkbox on the screen, they abused the system, mm -hmm. and that's why this happened, as opposed to this system was misleadingly marketed as you know, uh, being the kind of thing that you really didn't have to pay that much attention to. Right. Um, Especially because this was 2019 before, you know, FSD beta. Right. So they'll probably say, like, this wasn't meant for city streets. Because they ran, you said they ran it was a red on an light. Yeah. It, well, it was an exit ramp. It took an exit ramp and then ran the light at the end of the exit ramp. You're yeah. Not supposed to do that. Not supposed to do that, no. Um, and, and 
in my opinion, there haven't been any fatalities with FSD beta yet because the system is so bad that people are actually babysitting it, you know, mm -hmm. properly. That's not to say you can go online and find insane videos of the cars attempting to do all kinds of crazy shit right. and the users have stopped them before they run over a human or before they drive onto the train tracks or before they turn the wrong way down a one-way street or whatever. It was like the imperfections are so prevalent that people right away realized, I can't trust this. Whereas I can't trust I think this. with autopilot, all of this is like, a, it becomes a pattern and then they just go, okay, this has worked really well on highways for six months yeah. and I, I've been taking naps and reading and now, and then does something wrong. Right, well, that's why, that's the dangers of this stuff. When it's so terrible, it's not that dangerous because you are constantly aware of how terrible it is. Mm -hmm. Even if it's in your best, your financial interest to say how great it is because it makes the stock price go up. But like, you know in your heart, because you're in the car, that this is a terrible system that has no business being on the street. Autopilot, on the other hand, is just good enough that people get incredibly complacent. And you hear them talking about uh, or posting about online how it's so good that they don't touch it most of their way to work. It's only one, you know, and the and when you trust it just enough, that's when really bad shit happens. Mm -hmm. Because you're not ready to take over, you're distracted, you think it's gonna be fine, but when it's not fine, as this driver found out, it is 100% your fault Tesla will throw you under the bus. They will take no responsibility because they're able to outsource the risk and bank the reward. Right. Right. The user will be, you know, uh, we've said this over and over. If you are using autopilot and the car gets into a crash, it's your fault. Not morally, but legally, <laughs> but legally yeah. it's your fault. Yeah. If you are using autopilot, and the car is about to get into a crash, and you try to wrestle control back from the car, but it's not enough to prevent you from crashing, that's also your fault, because you were the one driving. <laughs> but if you are using autopilot, and a situation happens in front of you, and the autopilot jams on the brakes, and that story somehow goes around, it'll be like, autopilot saves people. Correct. Right. So you they bank the good, and outsource all the risk. And this, is, again, is different from any other AV de developer who has a corporate insurance policy, and the example, again, is Uber, and their test driver driving an autonomous test vehicle, Volvo XC90, hit and killed a pedestrian named Elaine Helsberg. That was, that was not the fault even though the the driver uh, the test driver was distracted at the time, that that liability was on the company. That's a, a a corporate insurance policy that has corporate accountability, and that accident was enough to shut the whole thing down mm -hmm. because the corporate liability is real. Um, you know, if you morally accept it, right? So. Interesting situation that this person was charged with a felony. The bad news is, in my opinion, the, the story says the trial won't happen until mid-2023. In the meantime, Tesla can keep dumping this technology onto into cars, and it's, it's just the, every additional vehicle makes it more and more dangerous out there. Um, and, and the families of the victims are suing the driver and Tesla, but their argument isn't great. They're, I read their, arg not their whole argument, the, the, it basically said that this person had a bad driving record and therefore he shouldn't have been allowed to have a, such a fast, powerful vehicle with this technology, which in my yeah. opinion is very flimsy. The argument should be that this technology was misleadingly marketed in a way that convinced this person he didn't have to pay attention. I mean, and or this person used it in a way it wasn't intended, because that's what if that's what Tesla's going to say. Ultimately, if this person's supposed to be in control of the vehicle, like, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but that's that's what I'd go after. Yeah. Instead of trying to like sue Tesla via this whole thing, but yeah, saying that the car, because someone commented on one of our pages uh, recently, like. Are they going to start asking for special license tests because of all of these thousand horsepower EVs? It's like, well, they haven't done it for 
any of Forever. the hypercars yeah. that are available or any of the supercars. So why would they start I doing it? I would love it, something you know? like that. Of course we would. I mean, imagine they're not, if you're, they're yeah. not going to. Yeah, they're, so. they won't. Right. We've been talking about it for years, a, a yeah. tiered licensing system, but they but they won't. Right. So so you can't say this person's a bad driver, they shouldn't have car X. Yeah. Yeah. We've already, we, we it's been it's been proven that in this country, if you have money, you can have any car you want. Right. I mean, there's people that have four DUIs conviction, DUI convictions and can still drive. That, to me, like, is very wild. I agree. That's yeah. ridiculous. But My, they our can, friend Amir yeah. on his, was hit uh, six months ago while at a traffic light on his motorcycle, was hit from behind at 30 miles an hour from a BMW, by a BMW who w- ran a red light. He was stopped at a red light by himself. This dude plowed through and underneath him, and he tumbled through the air, and he got fucked up. Ow. He's healing, but this and this person was caught a few miles up the road, and it was their fourth DUI. And I'm like, how the fuck do you have a license after right. the third? Right. Or the second. Right. Yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah. But Should this not. person had a license. I mean, it was, I, I just, that I don't understand. We got, let's get to that first. Yeah. But to me, it's it's just, it's about the, the double speak, the misleading marketing, all outsourcing the risk to your customers who you're then convinced, you're, you're convincing them to buy in and saying that this is about to be perfect, this technology. Next year, it'll be perfect. <laughs> By in a couple months, next year, someone sent me this compilation video from, um, I think the YouTube channel is called Bullshit Explained or something like that, or mm-hmm. Bullshit Exposed, I think it was. There's just this fucking compilation of Elon over and over and over for the last seven years going, oh, yes, it'll be ready in a, a month or two. It'll be ready next year. And by by next year, we'll have a robo-taxi. By next year, you'll be able to summon your car from L.A. But, and it's like 2015, 2016. But, and just by next year, by next year, by next year. And none of it has been true. Now, is that your favorite video of 2022 or your least favorite video? Both, because on the one hand, it was a totally accurate uh, compilation of a liar lying repeatedly. On the other hand, it refers to itself in the title as a viral video. It says viral video exposes, but it's not like it's not like someone shared a tweet and said viral video right. and then had a viral. It referred to itself as oh, a viral that is video. Common. TikTok which is it's very common. Is, that's yeah. awful. So. It's both my favorite and and least favorite uh, video of the of the year, um, but it's it, I don't I, I don't know if this person being charged with a felony is is a good thing because on the one hand it's it's baby steps towards accountability, mm-hmm. but on the other hand it's singling out the user for the accountability, and I think that that may be a distraction from singling out the, uh, or from focusing the, the, the accountability on the, the person that misleadingly marketed this software yeah. and, and allowed the person to think that they didn't have to pay attention. I mean, if, if their legal argument is what you said it is, they shouldn't have this car, and I don't, I don't know how the laws work, but like if you submit that argument, if that's your case, that seems like it's pulling attention away from autopilot, right. and then that, so it will, there will be a case, it will be whatever, but I don't think there'll be accountability to test the technology yeah. because that's not who they're going after. They're going yeah. after the driver and the car they had. Well, the state is going after the driver. The family of the victims are going after the driver and Tesla, but they're going. They're choosing the wrong argument for Tesla. Yeah, but so they're saying your car is they're too fast. They're saying your car is too fast and powerful, which is a not a good argument. Right. They're saying your car has this software in it that's just good enough to let this guy become complacent. That's, that's the argument I would use. Yeah. And it's an easily demonstrable argument, too. Yeah, it's how you use the vehicle. Yeah. Otherwise, you, otherwise, you would sue someone who makes an F-250 because it's like, your truck was so strong, it yeah. drove through a building. Yeah. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that was in the news. The, I said it the James May way. The news. In the news. Uh, lots of questions. Some Many. left over from uh, Reggie's show. Um, Reggie was a great guest. I really, so fun. I really enjoyed that show. It was fucking awesome. Uh, it was it was awesome. Um, I really enjoyed his uh, his just presence. He's just a fucking cool guy. Cool guy. Um, all our questions come from our Patreon. You can get in on that game at patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. Uh, most of the patrons are that pro driver level where you get uh, ad free listening experience. You get to watch the live show. You get to 
uh, get the show as soon as we record it, rather than waiting Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, you get an extra ninth show of the month. There are also some more affordable options if you want to get about it. Uh, we had a very successful first year with the Patreon. Um, the people who want to want to be part of it are part of it, and the people that are not really into it aren't really complaining that it exists. So that's the yeah. best case scenario it's really, for us. Really happy about it. Um, but if you do want to ask us questions for the show, that is where you do it, uh, on the Patreon page. And we put the shows up ahead of time so you don't have to actually be there for the live stream. You can do it probably 24 to 48 hours before, usually. All right. Um, ben, money, no object. 991.2 GT3 Touring or 992 GT3 Touring. This has been asked before, Ben, but I have repeatedly said I prefer the last generation car. The new generation car is uh, faster on the track, has more precise steering at the very, very limit. The limit. Uh, at the very limit. Um, and, uh, but uh, that, that, precision comes at an expense of at the expense of street ability uh, the older car is a little nicer to drive around town a little nicer to drive on the highway um, the the speed if you're not a real racing driver and driving them back to back is not discernibly different and the new car's bigger 992 is bigger but without a lot of extra usable space it's just bigger for bigger's sake mm -hmm. so both great cars I prefer the older one uh, HUD says, is an older generation 86 or BRZ enough of the experience as the newest one? Will I be dissatisfied saving some money and getting the older one? Only if you drive the newer one. I mean, if you never try the new one, you won't know what you're missing. I mean, it depends on if you can pick up a used one for like $15,000, half price based yeah. on the new one. I don't think the additional fifteen. I don't think you're going to miss that. Like the engine is way better. That is way, way better. But I feel like you're still getting a lot of the essence of what makes the BRZ FRS 86 great. Mm -hmm. So I think you're still gonna have a really good time. Yeah. And I mean, yes, the the new powertrain is substantially better. Yes. But if you don't go try it first, you'll be really happy with what you get with yeah. the old car. The old car was fine. Real good. Yeah. yeah real good. Yeah. Uh, oh boy. Okay. This is a long one. Uh, okay. Live in Canada. Uh, I need a, uh, what, wait. Okay. A fun car, interesting car, or, uh, Miles wants a fun, interesting car to enjoy while I wait six months or more for a new car. Need room for kids and reasonably practical thirty to $40,000 USD. Uh, considering low mileage F10 M5, similar year X5M or E63, I'm six foot three. I'd rather have this may be sacrilege. I'd rather have an X5M than an F10 M5. X5M is pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was really comfy, um, and it was really fast. I got a Turner Motorsport tune on the press car. It was fucking cool. Uh, the E63. Also lovely, um, but thirty to forty k does thirty to forty k will get you a nicer X five M than it will get you an E sixty three or an M five. Mm -hmm. A thirty thousand, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the SUV depreciates faster. I think I'd rather have that. I think I'd rather have that, especially for the winter. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because because he, he mentioned SUV or car, and the X five M is such a good. It's a pretty good performance car. I mean, it handles well. It's fun. It's exciting to drive. You, yeah, it I took mean, one on one shit. lap. Yeah, it like it will do it. that, but it will also carry your kids. It'll handle the snow. It, it's a better all arounder for sure. Yeah, uh, Zach Carnahan, who would post the fastest lap time at Road Atlanta in a Miata? The Queen of England, Kim Jong Un, or Andre the Giant? That is such a great question. Queen I of love England, it so much. She right. drives. Does she? Yeah, Queen of England's like back into cars. Really? Yeah, yeah. Land Rovers, Rolls Royces, she drives. All right, so probably her. Andre I think the Giant is not going to be able to steer. Or fit in it. Or fit in the car. He'd have to lay on the back of it somehow. And I think Kim Jong-un would be quick for the first two corners, but he'd probably crash. I, I think he'd I don't be know if Kim Jong-un has ever driven a car. Uh, but he can do everything. Oh, he, right. He can do That's everything. That's true. He's a he's god. He's the almighty leader. That's true. He's a god. Uh, so I think he will send it off. 
Yeah. <laughs> Road Atlanta. There's a lot of places to get it That's wrong in Road point. Atlanta. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, DAXA. Is it more financially wise to buy with cash uh, a to buy a fifty five hundred dollar nice condition but high mile RX eight? Uh, drive the shit out of it till the engine explodes and you pay someone to K swap it. Lease a brand new eighty six or get a loan for something used and similar in the thirteen to eighteen thousand dollar range. Jesus, this is all over the place. Well, buying a car that isn't that great, planning on blowing the engine and putting in a new one, paying someone else to do it, that is a financially awful decision. It's a really expensive project. Like the RX-8 is an average at best car. That I mean, it's a is, good chassis. It's got good steering. The and whatnot, engine is awful. Of course, oh, yeah, I agree. That's why Because not only does it. it make no power, it's horribly inefficient. Yeah. It's it like, like Fox miles body per fuel economy with like Miata power, it stinks. And I, I, I it's one of the only cars I've come very close to running out of gas, because I went through gas so fast I didn't even believe it. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not good. <laughs> Leasing a new 86, I mean, you're getting a brand new car, right? And if lease rates, if you're not getting hosed on a lease, if you're paying a regular lease rate, right? If you have decent credit and there's enough stock in cars where they're not they're trying to jack you on something, you could lease a car now and it may be that the buyout is less than what it's worth in a couple of years, maybe. You might be able to come out okay on that, but you have a brand new car. Uh, getting a loan for something used and similar, and th that's a financial question. And the, the getting a loan is heavily dependent on your credit and on, you know, a loan for a $15,000 car, you know, if the car is something interesting and enthusiast oriented, you're probably also going to have maintenance. It's probably not going to have a warranty. Like the thing about a lease on an 86 is like, you're not going to pay for maintenance. You're not going to pay. You got a warranty to cover you. You can romp on the car. If you hate it, you could just give it back. You know, but if you're getting a loan and you're making payments with interest on something that's 15K, you're also going to need to maintain that mm -hmm. car, you know, and probably sooner rather than later because it's not going to be mint. You know what I mean? You buy a $15,000 yeah. sports car, you're going to need tires pretty soon. It's probably going to need a, the, whatever the 100,000 mile service is. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not going to be ready to put 100,000 miles on, you know, just a, as is. Yeah, you I don't agree. want to take a loan on that unless you have to. If you have to, if that's your only option, fine. But I wouldn't take a loan on a car like that. A lot of this just depends on your financial situation because, yeah. like, if you have if you have six grand in cash, it seems like it seems like that's what you have. I mean, I I really enjoy owning my car outright. I've had car payments before, and it's it can it's just at my time in life that was very stressful of like making that payment. So you could get a $6,000 Miata, which will give you a lot of the driving experience of the RX-8, and it won't, and it sips gas, and it's super reliable, and it won't eat oil. And then you could just drive that, and you're also getting pretty close to the experience of like a BRZ or something like that. And then you own the fucking thing. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I agree with Matt. I like, mean, for, for 6,000 bucks, you can get a pretty decent E46 BMW. Yeah, you could get like a regular, like a three thirty, like maybe. a three 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 twenty five or a three thirty, and it'll be pretty nice. Learn and to it, wrench. Yeah, but and it won't be like it, you you still have to maintain it. You know, you you'll still have to do that. But like, it's a nicer like it's a way nicer car than an RX eight. <laughs> um, yeah, I think if you're gonna overextend yourself, meaning getting financing, overextending for a new car makes sense. Overextending for a used car that's not like a blue chip or appreciating or more expensive vehicle like mm. like you said 13 to 18 grand i mean that's not like, getting you something amazing right yeah i'd rather i'd I rather own something outright for half of that yeah there's a lot of options if you want to spend 15 grand on a on a on a used car but i wouldn't i would try to avoid taking a loan out for that amount yeah uh alan johnson what's your favorite car watch combo stereotype well if by favorite you mean like most cringeworthy or the one that's actually like my favorite. I mean, the most predictable is 
Rolex GMT Master or Submariner with a Porsche 911. I mean, that's the most And the you don't see obvious. that combination very often. <laughs> Never. <laughs> wow. Uh, I would say uh, the Breitling for Bentley with Bentley is the is the the stereotype. So wait, what did he ask about? Navitimer? Navitimer. Like I don't know M3? about M3 guy with a Navitimer. I see more, I would see more Navitimers driving BMW X6Ms than anything else. Yeah, this is a very busy watch. I mean, yeah, technically you can do you can do math with that. You can calculate like airspeed by using the slide. It's like a slide rule bezel. Yeah, that doesn't say M3 to me. That's as someone who's more like looking for their first Cessna or has their first Cessna and maybe XX more expensive. Yeah, um, because they're older and they want to, they want that high hip height to get in. It's easier. Hmm. I would say, uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, Rolex with sport watch is just the most. With uh, Rolex with Porsche is just the most, the most obvious by far. Um, this car seems. Th- this watch seems like a Lexus RX owner to me. That's what it seems like. I think it's a fast, fast SUV. Is is where this is at. I think this uh, Navitimers like. Uh, it's like uh, you own a. You own a small. Uh, plumbing contractor in the Midwest and you fly a Cessna on the weekends. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hinder Singh. Do do we have any experience with the Audi RS Q8? Is it worth the price tag? I mean, I think it is because it's 90% of the way to an Urus and it's half the price of that. And that's a good, that's a good truck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I don't, um, it is very close to an Urus. We had a customer here who had an RS Q8, and it is awfully close to an Urus, and it's literally half the price. Uh, uh, when you're on the inside, it's almost indistinguishable from an Urus. I mean, the her Urus has more hexagons, but the rest of it is pretty much the same. Um, I haven't driven one. I've only kind of poked around it, but I think it's more att- visually attractive than an Urus. It's the same. It's the same car, more visually attractive, a little bit less power, but not less enough that it really matters. Um, and the the you save money in a, in a lot of ways with it it's expensive it's still like 135 grand or 140 grand but urises are like 270 and it's largely very very similar yeah uh chris trykovsky what is your favorite auto manufacturer collaboration on one specific vehicle oh dude so easy mitsubishi and chrysler dude the conquest starion love it or the dsm yeah, Eagle, Eagle really Talon, uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse, for sure. That was a fun, exciting one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is a collab. I just I really like the Toyota engine that's in the Lotus Evora because the, oh, the yeah. car is great, but the engine works. Sure. Evora, G, Evora GT yeah. with the Toyota engine. And as Travis Sikulski learned, the Lotus engine by Lotus does not always work because he had the spree that he had to get rid of. Yeah. I also like how about the Pantera, Di Tommaso Ford. I love that car. Pantera's rule. That car is so good. Yeah, Di Tommaso Ford combo is is excellent. I would I would fuck with that. Uh, Dante Casali, if you could pair a current car with a mobility scooter and store it in the trunk like a Honda Moto Compo, uh, which would you pick? The Moto Compo is so cool. Yeah, I mean a mobility scooter like a like a like a bird scooter. Yeah, I think like any any of those. Is there really a difference anymore between birds sco- between the brands of scooters? I feel like they've all ju- they've all just adopted nine bot designs. You yeah, know? they all look and feel basically the same. Yeah, um, the Moto Compo is hilarious because, I mean, it's bigger than any electric scooter now, and it folds up into a gas engine. That's what's so funny yeah. about these because it's you know it's the original idea. I bet you you could fit a birds a folded bird scooter in the trunk of the MC20, in the back trunk. I can yes. say this about the MC20. It has basically no frunk, and it has a, a rear trunk behind the engine. Yeah, sort of like C8 enough. Corvette, but it's small. It's the trunk is smaller than a C8 Corvette. The C8 Corvette trunk is more of a cube shape, like in terms of depth. Whereas this slopes. Well, it's meant to hold golf right, clubs, right? And yeah, this, this is, is not. not. Yeah. This is meant to hold fitted luggage. Yeah, but you could probably like those. Not the my. I bought basically bird scooters on Amazon for like 300 bucks that we put we brought on the boat to take to the Audrain and you could fold one of those up and put it in the trunk of an MC20 
and that would be a good a good combo. That would be pretty good. Uh, it's like, what do you need that last mile for? I feel like if you're driving uh, like an Iceland truck, like an Arctic mm. truck, you're going to need a scooter to drive on normal streets for that. I think, yeah. you know, come down from the wilderness, get on your moto compo, and then go get groceries. The scooters are great for boat travel, dude. They rule. I mean, because you're at the dock, you want to go somewhere that's a couple miles away from the marina. You don't want to walk. The scooters are awesome for that. The problem with a car is you can usually drive the car the last mile. You don't necessarily. Need <laughs> that's to. true. I think so. I think I would do something like. Let's go back to Jag XK120, old British sports car, mm. probably going to break. Oh, a but rescue I, tender. Rescue vehicles. Rescue but now tender. I have the Moto Compo, <laughs> yeah. which would take gas, so I know I can stop at gas stations to keep right. going, and I go get the parts. Rescue, That's my plan. A rescue tender. Yes. Yeah, vintage vintage car. Rescue tender works, yeah. Uh, Daniel Hunsiger, uh, where would each of you consider to be the most inviting and kind place for car nerds? Basically, the anti-Virginia. Germany. I mean, I would, I would not say Germany because their rules regarding mods are so strict. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess, yeah, that's true. But um, Nevada. Yeah. The, Nevada has have, basically no laws. And they do have good roads. They do. Because they have a lot of mountains around. Yeah. That's a good point. Or like maybe and like- the tarmac a, is so good there. Yeah. You drive across, I drove, you know, I was in Tahoe. As soon as you cross the county line on the 80, like you, yeah. the sign that says, welcome to Nevada, yeah. there is a line on the ground I love and that. it turns dark black I and love like that. the tarmac's brand new. You don't remember where that happened to it? That road between the Nürburgring and Spa? Right when you get to Belgium, the tarmac turns to instant garbage. <laughs> it's like Germany is over. We have run out of Or, tunnels. I mean, honestly, Montana. Montana has oh, yeah. beautiful roads. True. Beautiful roads. Um, they have amazing vistas. And uh, and, and they, the LLC thing. You don't even have to fucking live there to register your car there. That's that's probably correct. Yeah. And you can drive in the snow in the wintertime. Nevada's pretty close, though. I mean, Nevada, you could do that kind of shit year-round. Yeah. Nevada it truly has what, no laws for driving. I mean, we, have, we had press launches... Remember the? Were you there with me for the Audi no, RS7? No, I know where you're going. The RS7 press launch was the most wink, wink thing. They made a route, a drive route from starting from Vegas that was literally the Silver State Classic drive route, and they're like, "See ya." And these were, and every single person on the fucking event hit 200 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, just nobody gives a fuck. It was so great. There's just no laws. There's no... Well, there's too much space. Yeah. There's just too much space. Right. If 90% of the law is enforcement, you need humans. <laughs> yeah. Humans. And it's no really, humans. That, no humans. those highways are very far off the beaten path. Yeah. Yeah. Um, JK. Tips for selling a rare but nobody cares car. One that has some enthusiast or collector value, but not enough for a premium consigner. Worried about low barding, low balling dealers and prefer to avoid, avoid online auctions. He's referring to a Mercedes C43 AMG. Well, first off, uh, forums. I mean, if you want, you know, a, a rare car sold to a targeted audience, a forum. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't know what the Mercedes forum is, the AMG forum is, but I'm sure there's at least one. <laughs> or Facebook pages, right? Enthusiast yep. Facebook pages. Yeah, those are big. Um, I don't know why this, this person prefers to avoid online auctions because that's like... Well, you're shrinking your market. And I think the fact that it's a oddball enthusiast car means you need to cast a much wider net. Like you need to find the people that are into that. And yeah. that's only going to be done on the internet or you can go to like... Find a group meeting for C43 owners and the five of you can go to a Bennigan's or whatever and eat sandwiches. But I think if you're not going to use an auction, you have to use something online because you just need to reach the people that are into these cars and yeah. make them aware this is for sale. Yeah. And the problem, I mean, a C43 is a, is a pretty nice car or was, but rare but nobody cares is an interesting way of putting it because the problem with mid kind of levels... AMG cars like this is they're automatic, you know, and they're also sort of pseudo luxury cars. Um, and once a luxury car gets like 15 years old, it's no longer really luxurious. Mm -hmm. A C43, I've driven them. They were they were quick for the time. They're not that quick by modern standards. So, so you may not if you're not going to find that 
person who cares about the rarity. And in, in for someone to care about the rarity, it still has to be a pretty mint example. What did uh, what did, oh that one just finished on like last week on cars and bids. What did it sell for? Nineteen K? We have one for nineteen and one last May for fifteen. Yeah. So ninety nine. So fifteen and nineteen you know, if you know, nineteen I think for a C forty three is a pretty decent number actually. And so this might act, this information might help too. The number of bids on this auction, this one sold for fifteen, was thirty six. That's and a good number comments. of bids. It's a good I mean, number of bids. It's a lot of comments, I think. That's something to factor into. Like, this is how many people got reached, and this what is the an silver online one? auction. That's the that's the one from last May. What about the silver one from last week? We're looking at cars and bids right now. <clears throat> yeah, thirty eight bids, forty seven comments. That's pretty good action on a car that, frankly, isn't that interesting. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. There's no explanation in this question about why you want to avoid online auctions, but I'm not allowed to have a computer anymore. I mean, I really, if you can't find a forum or a Facebook page, you know, where where that uh, maybe they want to sell for literal cash. Um, but if you can't do that, go to the biggest cars and coffee event in your area and yeah. possibly drive an hour. If you live in a small town or something, go to the biggest one within reasonable distance because then you'll be reaching the group that's into that shit. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can also like, you know, Craigslist, you know, that stuff's still out there. The Auto Tempest, there's 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 f- sites that are free to list on. Right. And you you start with that stuff before you, you know, you go at the I mean, look, Thaddeus, our friend was who just moved back was looking for fucking weird rare shit on Craigslist like 2 days ago. You know, because you can usually find stuff that's undervalued a little bit or maybe more fairly priced these days because the people there are using an older older platform. Yeah. Um, I don't want to answer that. That's it's. Mm. I, I, yeah, let's skip that one. Alex, just drive, just drive around California. Someone wants to know where to visit on automotive holiday in America. California. America is enormous. You got to narrow it down. I I don't like playing tour guide. It's just it's so easy to find stuff. But like it's America. America's fucking huge, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> like, it's like, it's huge. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Chris Nolke uh, is considering a new Speedmaster, uh, Omega Speedmaster watch, but I've never owned a manual wind watch. Is it the barrier to use that I worry it will be, or should I just do it and live the moon watch life? That's a good question for Zach, because... Uh, I got we got you a, a Weiss watch, That's right? As a, which was a manual wind watch, and that was kind of your only watch for a while. Yeah. Did you find it to be a barrier to entry, or did you enjoy the daily routine of winding? I mean, I definitely in the beginning, I definitely forgot to wind it, and then you look down and your clock has stopped, and you go, "Wait, what time is it?" And you look at your phone. Uh, but I really like the thinness of it. I like it's lighter than the the Bremont one I have, which is automatic or whatever it's called. Yeah. And like, I don't think there's a barrier to entry. It's just, you have to remember to do the thing. So brush your teeth and wind the watch. And it, the thing with the Weiss one is it's only lasts like 24 hours. So I don't know if there are watches where you wind them and they're good for like two days or three days, yeah. but if you just make a routine Some are longer than others. of like winding it when you're sitting, you know, at the, I don't know, at the coffee shop or whatever, you just stay on it. And then if you like the watch, you like the watch. Cause I love that thing. Yeah. Like I think it's the right size. I like the look of it. I like everything about it. Yes. I do forget to wind it sometimes. It's a good thing. I have a telephone. Yeah. I, to, so to me, the winding is an enjoyable ritual. And I just kind of do it. Some watches last longer than others. The thing about the Speedmaster Moon Watch that is important to note, it's not going to be the winding thing. It is not a waterproof watch. Like, you don't even want to wear it in the shower. Ooh. So that, it can go to space, but it can't go in the shower. That's Or a swimming pool. That's or... a thing to note about a Speedmaster. So... That to me is if it's your first or only or primary watch, that's that's a thing to notice that's more important than that's than true because I, I wore that Weiss watch like every day for years and on shoots and things and mm-hmm. I'd sweat and I eventually had to get it serviced by Cameron because it had like slowed down. I think it had gotten a little like humid. Yeah. Um just because it was like 
you know, I'm in the desert yeah. for like months. So yeah. that's something to think about with this one as well. Yeah. That's the, the water resistance is going to be more of a barrier to entry than the, uh, the manual winding, but it's still, it's a lovely watch. I understand why you'd want to wear one. They're very comfortable. <laughs> uh, Dan Mosqueda. Uh, has been watching Aptera's YouTube channel, and it looks like they may actually produce a real car. I don't believe that at all. Uh, they make a they they claim to make a funky three wheeled thing, but they isn't this the company that's been making this and taking deposits for like it's seven years? Yeah, it looks Is almost this... like a helicopter kind of canopy with two two wheels in the front, sort of outside the body and a, and a third wheel very aerodynamic um it's they they claim on their website the world's first solar ev that requires no charging for most daily use more, most daily use i i don't believe any of that um it's it's a funky looking thing um they're always they always say they're about to be yeah, they're about to be making something, and um, I, I oh, there's a website called apterascam.com. This is much more interesting. Let's yeah, see what this like website it. is about. I feel like they, they they've been around for a long time, but no one's gotten their cards delivered. Oh uh, wow! Here's a oh, the more I convince that there was uh oh. I mean, this is oh wow! Okay, this is somebody that made a site, and then they did. They then said, "It seems like it's actually a site made to uh, promote it." Interestingly enough, it's a subversive thing. This uh, website seems to say, uh, "It looks like it's almost written by Aptera themselves," or it's like a super. Yeah, this is weird. Oh yeah, the wording at the bottom is the weird. The wording at the bottom seems like they're really heavily promoting it. Um, Out. Oh, I, you know what? I am getting them confused with Elio Motors. Well, that was definitely a yeah, scam. That's, but I, I don't, I don't necessarily think, it's, think that Aptera is a scam in that way. I just like, I, 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 okay, if you built this weird aerodynamic shape, okay. I don't buy that. I've seen the math done on solar panels that are the size of a car. And it just doesn't seem like it's enough energy generated to actually power a car you know what i mean in any kind of real way um i think uh someone 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 did like a review quote recently but they just got to ride in it and it yeah. just drove like an ev um, but it was plug-in battery powered so i think their goal is you could charge the car while it's parked and you can get a couple miles but mostly you're just you know you're topping it off and you're yeah. not driving it very far well yeah most daily use is doing yeah. a lot of heavy lifting on that website cool idea I, I, it's a neat looking thing. I mean, I guess it is kind of. I guess maybe people want to drive a car that looks like a killer whale. Uh, maybe that's a maybe a, an orca like vehicle. Is it's like appealing. a T Rex with bodywork with <laughs> doors, which is why it also gets around the you know crash standard because it's probably considered a motorcycle. It's I'm guessing probably a, but it's three wheels. It's important to note that any vehicle that has three wheels only has three wheels so that it can be built without safety standards. That's the only reason to ever build and sell a three-wheeled car. So before you go looking at a three-wheeled car and going, this is this is important, this is, oh, it's, it's efficient, okay, it's neat looking, it's different, whatever. The only reason it has three wheels is so that it can be less safe than something with four wheels. Right, the T-Rex had it, what was the other? Um, the the Expo? Slingshot. Slingshot. The, the cro uh, no, crossbow no, cross is four wheels. I yeah, yeah, crossbow is yeah, yeah, different. Um, They're slingshot, both the Morgan yeah. three-wheeler, these are all vehicles that are built specifically with three wheels so they don't have crash standards. Right. Yeah, so. Keep that in mind. Yes. Um, uh, Ryan, uh, I recently came across Corum watches. Yeah, uh, their classic seems to be a $20 gold coin. They cut in half and put the watch mechanism in between it. Uh, why are Corum watches not collectible? Because they are ugly. Very, very straightforward. They make a very ugly watch. Uh, they also advertise in all these magazines. And any watch company that does this much shameless advertising is not making something that people want. They have some sort of interesting designs, like 
sort of interesting designs. That one on the right is a knockoff of a Richard Millet. They've got some other really knockoffy kind of designs, but um, I don't know. They they don't they do nothing for me, and they're advertising. The amount of and the amount of and the type of advertising they do. Well, also, be, if if it's twenty dollars, it's not going to be collectible because that means they they have to sell volume. So there's no, be the, a lot coi- of the coin that oh, they the cut up is so, the watches the are watch? like thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah, nice. the watches are thousands of dollars. They're expensive. I mean, if you right. if you're into it, like you go ahead, spend your money. But um, collectible things are things that people want without having to be. You know, advertise to them a lot. You know, they're just their designs are fucking ugly. If you ask me, that's the ugh, yuck. Um, oh, bold, bold, extroverted. Uh, Dawson wants to know what happened to Beeline Coffee. They went out of business, unfortunately. Not everybody. Coffee is a hard business. Um, what? Okay. Wants a fun car. A fun car for under forty-five thousand dollars. Uh, two door or four door, I mean, lots of lots of options, lots of options. You've got any number of high performance Mustangs that you can get, and Camaros uh, for under that under that amount of money. You've got all kinds of. Uh, this is a, a summer car. Drive to the family beach house. So, pick, I think a E forty six M three convertible. Forty forty five grand gets you a bunch of that, right? Oh yeah. Right, the manual you can get two of them. Not to mention 911s. I mean, convertible 911s. If you're talking about a summer car, and uh, you know, a, a soft top 911 is worth substantially less than a hard top 911, and it and in 95 percent of cases they drive just as nice. Hmm. They just don't have that collectability. Now you may not buy be buying a super appreciating asset the way you would be if you're buying a. A hard top one, but that doesn't mean you're not getting like a whole bunch of really fun car. A nine nine seven Carrera S convertible, you can get that for forty five grand. You know what I mean? It's a nice car. You could get you could get a brand new BRZ, so you have warranty and everything, uh, which is a very fun car. Because you said you said he highlights engagement over being the fastest thing. I think I think the Mustang GT. If you're bringing like you know a family of four on a trip to a house, you're going to need suitcases and shit. So. I think the GT has a, a nice trunk and it's easier to access than the Camaro. And also the Camaro backseat would be very claustrophobic for children. Mm-hmm. Um, a used M2, a used M2 would be great. That's a great car. Yeah, that would be very nice. Um, Maybe F80 M3, four doors. Yeah, you might, can you get those that cheap? Oh, you get, just grand? get an E90. You could get an E90, E90 four door yeah. E90 with a manual. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a, that would be nice. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Hunter Sands, will we see an enthusiast car decrease in horse... What? Oh. Wait, did I accidentally delete too much? Oh, no. So the, he basically says is saying, will we ever see oh. an enthusiast car sold with less power than its predecessor? Um, similar to the new GT3 since it was a marginal gain. Well, so... That's not similar to the new GT3 because the new GT3 makes the same power and went 17 seconds quicker around the Nurburgring. Right. So if the pow- you sometimes see the power be stagnant and then improvement happen in other areas. Subaru. You'll almost never see the power go down. People just don't want that. Right. I mean, how you know your ta- your biggest customer base with a new sports car or enthusiast car is going to be people who owned the last one. And if they don't have something to brag about or impress them or have a reason for buying that next new one, you know, you, you're just not going to have it. I mean, unless that that's why they come out with a newer sub model, right? The Honda Civic got bigger and, and more powerful and, and more spacious. So they had to come out with the fit underneath mm-hmm. it. You know, the C-Class Mercedes. Bigger, more powerful, more horsepower, more features. Well, they now have come out with the A class underneath it. You know, uh, same the Audi, the A4 kept getting bigger, more powerful. The S4, M4, the R4. M2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, you you'll see a whole new car come out underneath it. But I think it is I think it is highly unlikely that an enth- a maker of enthusiast cars would intentionally sell a less powerful version. 
I think they'll the, stay flat. Like the, the STI was flat, or the WRX. This new new WRX makes the same power and torque as the old one. Right. But they've changed a bunch of other things about it to help tell you why you should buy this one instead of getting a used one. So yeah. they have to do that. But I, I would be very surprised if there was a decrease ever, especially because now as things get electric, it's just too easy to make more power. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Edgar, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for your question. I don't I don't know anything about what's going on at Barrett Jackson. I do not plan to go. They keep trying to make this Scottsdale Car Week thing happen. The fact is, I think Scottsdale is one of the most boring places I've ever been. It's just it's just a boring place. It's Vegas with no gambling. Yeah. But I mean it's got a lot of space, so they have a big trade show. Yeah. Or whatever. I did enjoy thing. when I went to Barrett Jackson that one time, the sideshow. That flea market of crazy shit they've got is really fun. And if you're going to Barrett Jackson, don't ignore that. That's where you get like V8 swap luggage and shit, Dude, right? Dude, you can buy like boats cowboy and boots right next to a shotgun, right next to a Rolex, right next to a hot tub, a massage chair, a fan boat. I mean, <laughs> dun, 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 and it's a mile of this shit. Thomas Kincaid painting, no problem. Like, literally <laughs> any fucking thing you can imagine. Neon signs, you know, gas pumps. It's crazy the kind of shit you could buy there. That's, That's amazing, worth yeah. seeing once. I, but um, but I don't know. I don't. I haven't studied what's gonna be uh, what's gonna be sold. Um, Miguel Flores says, "Did you know an RC car built with off-the-shelf parts can run a quarter mile in six seconds? That's nuts. Rest in peace, ankles for everybody. Like scale or no? I real think, I think, real quarter mile. I th oh, that's a good question. Real quarter mile or scale quarter mile? I could see it being real. I mean, some of these RC cars go 80 miles an hour and it's zero to 80 in one second, and then it's like, well, now it's just there. Uh, just, yeah, I guess. I, I guess know. maybe that that could be possible." RC car quarter mile. Can we can we get a video of a of a quarter mile here? Official quarter mile drag strip. World's fastest RC car. That's December twenty sixteen. Is this video? And what uh, does it say? What the time is? If we go down to the the info. Typhon two point GT. Uh -huh. Oh my God! You have to watch this. You have to watch a two minute and thirty second ad. No, no okay, no. hang on. I can hit the skip button. Skip. Let's see. What is this RC car? Oh, official. What? What the fuck? This is, is the. This, this is now this video my least is favorite terrible. video ever. I hate this video, and I hate this person who uploaded it. This car is just sitting there. Come on! It looks like a little McLaren F1. It's a McLaren F1 body. Does it not show the fucking run? Oh my god! Oh my god! You've got to be shitting me. This is you stink. Listen, <laughs> listen. Zach took, Big Cheeto one eleven. Zach took the time to click the dislike button. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, I will protest. Yeah, hit us up on hit us up on Twitter if you've got a six know. second quarter mile yeah. uh, run. Um, Adam says, "Is it worth stretching to buy a base Boxster over a GR eighty six? Um, well, look, I mean, what what you're getting. Is uh, I mean even a base Boxster will will have more power than the eighty six, um, but you're getting a higher quality item. I mean it's put together better, the materials are better, it feels nicer to use. I think yeah, a lot of the interior is nicer to touch than the than like yeah. a, a BRZ or eighty six, but. I mean, it's still, if it's base, like you're going to see a lot of empty buttons, and I think it's going to be the simple black interior. Your color choice is probably going to be really simple. And remember, the engine is just like it's kind of meh. Remember, we drove well, we drove the, the, the Cayman T. Yeah, which the was base a great Boxster car. engine is not that great. It's not great. It's, yeah. it, it's torquey. It's fine, but it doesn't. It's not fun to like rev out and drive. Where I think the A6 I'd rather is a buy a, bit more a used six cylinder Boxster yes. than a '86. If you can get that, if you can get a, a used last gen six cylinder Boxster, that's a nicer thing than a G, an eighty six. Yeah, this is a tough. I think it really, it man, that's really subjective. I'd rather have the eighty six, but I also like. I think I'd rather have a vehicle that's higher spec, and that vehicle is still really fun to drive. Yeah. Than have the cheapest version of something that can be great when you put more parts into it. 
Yeah, the base Boxster engine is not particularly inspiring. The S is a much nicer engine with the variable turbo geometry and the extra torque of the displacement. It does make a difference. Um, yeah, I would say either buy a great used six-cylinder Boxster or a 86. Yeah. Uh, those are his cars, so. Oh, what was that one? Well, he has a daily hatch and he has an E46 330CI, so. Oh, is that the same same, same person? person? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. It'd be a th that's a third car. <sighs> I wouldn't do it. I I mean, I wouldn't get either of those as a third car. I would I would really like. I don't think you need a hot hatch daily and an eighty six. Like a Boxster or an eighty six are both fairly equally practical. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, like, I wouldn't have either of them as a third car. Yeah, I, I think the E46 and the, and the 86, I feel like, are too similar. Yeah. I think I think used, used six-cylinder Boxster. That's what yeah. I'd go with. Yeah. Uh, last question. Stanley Williams, any experience with ball watches? Um, none. I've seen one person wearing them once. I've seen on the internet that they make uh, a, a decent piece the na the name ball on a watch is weird as fuck to me, and I can't logo is very simple though. <laughs> it's a joke. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> it just looks like a pouch of some kind. I don't know. I don't. Um, I don't have any experience with them. Yes, they are engineering focused. Um, I I hate their logo. I hate their font. It's too big on the middle of the watch. Um, but from what I gather, they make a decent uh, a decent watch. Um, and that's all my my limit my, I'm limited doesn't the logo like too big it's too big it's bigger than the date yeah it's a lot of watch companies make their logo so look at the look at the size look compared to that yeah it's way Rolex it's the, much smaller Rolex logo is probably half the size of that ball ball logo there I hear they make a decent product I really do but that but the, I but that's all I know never touched one or held one um but uh, I hate the logo. I hate to be seven years old, but I mean, if I just see the word, like, yeah, I think you know, yeah, I ball. Just, it just, yeah, it's it says where it ball goes. On I, it. I've had them for a while. <laughs> That's what I think. So I think it'd be hard to wear something that just says that. Names are important. Don't try and tell me they aren't. Of course, names are important. If your shit says ball on it. I'm just not about it. <laughs> yeah. Man, there are a lot of watch. How many watch companies are there in the world? Hundreds. And there's less now than there were. You know, a hundred years ago, there were more. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, because people there well used seen. to be like little ones. You know, like little all over the place. You <laughs> didn't. It wasn't like a global marketplace. You know, you just had like a bunch of little ones. Um, all right, that's our show. Nice. 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 I need some lunch. Yeah. It's been a long with Pilates and so much coffee. I really need some food. Yeah. Um, do we have a guest? What's our? Oh, do we have? We have a show next week. What do we got next week? What's on the What's on the schedule? We need to line up. We might have a special guest coming in uh, next week. Uh, we might. We're working on We're working on something that I'm trying to make happen. But we will. Uh, oh, we'll Larry Chen. Yeah, we have Larry Chen on the 26th, mm -hmm. and uh, we may have another special guest coming in that I'm working on. That I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, it works out. Okay. Um, but uh, and we'll be able to talk about the MC20, how it drives. That'll be exciting. Uh, we also get the GTI on yes. Monday, the new GTI Mark Eight. That'll be exciting, and um, that's our show. I'll see you guys later. Bye.